Graduates and guests, please stand for your senior officers of the University of Liverpool. Please be seated. I declare this congregation for the celebration of our graduates open. So, good afternoon, class of 21. It's uh, welcome to your graduation ceremony. It's great to have you here. Uh, and welcome to your honored guests, your family and your friends here today to support you. And it's great to have you here in person. So I'm Professor Tom Wally. I'm the Associate Pope Vice Chancellor for Clinical Research, and I'm here today instead of Professor Louise Kenny, who can't be here. But it's my privilege and pleasure to be here with you today as we celebrate this important milestone in your lives. Uh, together with your family and friends and your lecturers and all those who've supported you through your journey at the University of Liverpool. Now, you're graduating here today, almost all, as professors of dental surgery. So, well done. Now, your graduation ceremony, of course, has been a bit delayed, but it's uh, still an opportunity to celebrate your fantastic achievements with your family and friends and maybe a day to reflect a little bit. So um, a long time ago, when I was in your position, uh, I was sitting there thinking, on the one hand, I'm very pleased and relieved to have finished my studies. A bit sad to leave student life and all that came with it. A bit fearful of what lay ahead in terms of clinical practice. And that's what I would like to have been advising you today. But of course, it's all different. Uh, you've already been out there in the big world. Uh, working away because you've been students and now dentists at a time like no other in history. And students all over the world have had their courses disrupted in all kinds of ways, uh, particularly in the past uh, 18 months. And for you, perhaps this has been vastly worse than for any other students because of the nature of your studies. So for the past 18 months of your, the last 18 months of your university experience, was certainly not like anything you had anticipated or you'd ever expected to actually experience. And we're very conscious that a lot of the time that would have been extremely tough for you in one form or another. So uh, in the good old days before the pandemic, um, most dental procedures, of course, generated an aerosol of some kind and uh, incorporating the patient's saliva. So this obviously became a very high risk of contamination and of spreading the virus. And therefore, the very nature of dental practice had to change as a matter of urgency at that point. So uh, dental practices had restrictions on the treatments they could undertake and on how many patients they could see because they had to have downtime while they cleaned the surgery in between each patient rigorously. It involved working with um, uh, personal protective equipment uh, and so forth. So it's been a very difficult time. A lot of dentistry stopped, and there were a number of uh, emergency clinics set up around the country, including, of course, one at the um, Liverpool University Dental Hospital. Now, the consequences for dental education were even more drastic. For your part, for the most part, you gain your experience by working in an open, multi-chair uh, clinic. And of course, the risk of contamination and cross-contamination between patients and between patients and staff in that environment was enormous. And uh, at the start of the pandemic, when no one quite knew what was going on, it really wasn't something we could carry on at all. So uh, that coupled at the same time as a national lockdown, such that the need for social distancing meant that we couldn't even continue face-to-face -face teaching. So uh, in March of your fourth year, last year, um, you all had to go home, as did many of the staff, and we had to move to novel ways of actually undertaking teaching. So staff at the dental school quickly began to move courses online in one form or another, develop assessment forms uh, that could be taught and delivered through online mechanisms, and we all became familiar with uh, the dreaded Zoom and Microsoft Teams, which became the major mechanism for delivering your course for some time. So um, things have got a lot better since then. Dental schools have found ways, based on evidence, to resume teaching and re resume clinical practice, uh, avoiding and minimizing the spread of COVID-19. And from September last year, you and the staff all returned to practice and back to the campus, thank goodness. The difficulties with aerosol generating procedures 
have not gone away. They still exist. But, uh, and in the early days, when you came back in September, the range of clinical experience you could acquire was severely limited by that. But as we've learned more, we've developed techniques um, using certain types of dental drill, operating at a lower speed, perhaps, than the uh, usual air turbines, which could be used for dental procedures without creating the aerosols in the same way. So this was a turning point, and our main, our main placement provider, the Liverpool University Dental Hospital, spent a lot of money changing equipment at very short notice to actually um, allow that to happen and to get back to providing almost a full range of treatments for patients. Nevertheless, the uh, remainder of the academic year was a worrying time for all concerned. Uh, we'd lost a lot of clinical experience during the lockdown and with repeated waves of COVID, it wasn't quite clear what was going to happen in the very near future. So it's been a difficult time for you. The school monitored development of your clinical skills and maybe pointed some of you a particular um, experience in certain techniques um, to make sure that you actually met the requirements of the regulator. And in the end, 67 out of a class of 71 were awarded their BDS, your BDS, in, in July. So, uh, and you're now graduating here today. And that's an outstanding uh, achievement for each and every one of you during the most extraordinary difficult circumstances which amplify uh, the extent of your achievement. Now since September this year, most of you have been out there working as foundation dentists in one form or another. And I'm sure your hand no longer shakes when you're giving that uh, anaesthetic injection. I'm sure you've learned how to work with other professions and you've learned how to cope with being independent practitioners and you've learned how to smooth out all the rough bits, not just in your fillings, but in yourselves. And that's an ongoing process, of course. So during that time, during that last 12 months, there's been some gradual return to normality uh, in ter terms of dental practice. Some aspects of dentistry have probably changed for good. You probably won't be reaching for the high-speed drills in the way you used to uh, in the past. So, and minimally invasive techniques are probably going to become more prominent than they were in the past. Now, you know all of this, and I'm laying it out here uh, partly to acknowledge the difficulties you've had to overcome to get here today. And we know all the sleepless nights and uh, long days and difficult times and anxieties you've had exacerbated by these difficult circumstances. So the pandemic has devastated and divided people and continues to do so. But it's also brought out some of the best of the human spirit. And you have demonstrated that many times over the past 18 months. You've been determined, you've been resilient, you've been flexible, you've demonstrated your learning. And that's why you're here today. So uh, in spite of all that stress, and as I said, that multiplies the quality of the achievement you've made by being here today. So as students, and now as dentists, of course, you've carried on treating patients. Uh, despite all of these difficulties with skill and dedication and even at times with courage as we face the unknown. <coughs> Dentistry is a noble profession and you're privileged to be joining that noble profession as you have done, but be in no doubt that noble profession is privileged to have you as its members too. Now you didn't do it alone, but no doubt there have been lots of lonely and even scary times in the past 18 months and I guess particularly during this 12 months of your first clinical practice when you're really wondering what's going on. Uh, so uh, you've done it by supporting one another and by being supported by your teachers here in the university and hopefully now in clinical practice by your fellow health professionals in the NHS. And of course, all the time being supported by your family and friends who are here with you today. And you and your families can be very proud of your achievements. Um, I can say that we in the university, and here I speak for the whole faculty, and for Professor Vince Bissell as Dean of the Head of, Med of, the, uh, medicals of the Dental School, and also of course the staff of the Dental School, are very proud, immensely proud of what you have actually been able to achieve. And you're an inspiration to us in everything you've achieved. So I invite your family and friends to applaud you for your achievements. Today is all about you 
and your achievements and personal successes here at the university, but it's also a day to look forward to the future and think about your aspirations and your future career. One thing we've all learned is that we don't know what the future is going to hold. We don't know how we're going to uh, manage through all kinds of things like pandemics. We can just be fairly reassured that actually you've got the skills to actually manage whatever comes your way. You're going to learn lots in the course of the next 12 months and, and for the rest of your lives. I'll come back to that. But whatever you face, you will deal with it. You have the skills. You have everything it takes to actually be successful uh, in your career for the future. Now, during your career, you're going to see lots of changes. So when I qualified, um, no one had ever heard of HIV disease. And now, a long time afterwards, perhaps, it's become a condition that we can't cure, but it's one we can treat and which is compatible uh, with a normal life expectancy. And when you entered your fourth year as medical students, no one had ever heard of COVID-19. And this too will pass in time, but not just yet. Um, and we haven't solved the problem yet by any means. There's still 150 people dying every day of this, and this is an enormous tragedy. But the outlook has been turned around by advances in basic and clinical science in the past 18 months. Um, and the Omicron variant uh, may throw us back a bit, but undoubtedly we'll get past that too. In dentistry in the past 20 years, there have also been lots of advances uh, in the science and the technology. So for instance, titanium implants have become almost a routine procedure for replacement of te missing teeth with very high success rates of 10 years. You're working with new materials that weren't thought of when I was actually qualifying, which allow you to uh, avoid the kind of destructive restorative dentistry that used to be the case. Uh, so you can do far more restoration than used to be possible. And the introduction of digital workflows has revolutionized healthcare, not least in dentistry, where uh, conventional impression techniques are now being supplanted by intraoral scanning techniques, and then using uh, developing appliances through computer-aided milling and printing. So the world is going to keep on changing. There are going to be lots of technological advances like that over the course of your careers. Now many of you will work within or for the NHS and the NHS is going to keep on changing. So there are going to be lots of organizational changes as well. And as you're probably discovering rapidly if you didn't know already, the NHS is not always the easiest place to work in or to work for. But despite those issues, and there are lots of issues, not least in dentistry in relation to access to dentistry, the NHS remains the finest health service in the world, and I know you'll want to play your part in trying to keep it in that envious position. But not everything changes. The fundamentals of dentistry uh, have not changed and will not. Your patients will always want rapid treatment and relief from pain for their dental problems. And uh, relief of pain and suffering and the enhancement of quality of life will always remain at the heart of dentistry. I'll flag up three other things that won't change, some of which you're aware of already. The first is the need to be a lifelong learner. Just as you have been during the pandemic and for the first months of your clinical practice, for the rest of your career, the bad news is you're going to have to keep on learning new things every day and things will keep on changing. And some of us regard actually as very good news. So you've got to commit yourselves to always being curious, always to asking questions, to questioning yourself about whether you're doing the right thing for the patient and whether you're doing it as well as you possibly can, to always, being, uh, to always striving to do things better. And that's one of the paradoxes of graduation. So normally at graduation in July, I'd be telling you that um, you are now considered fit to go, face, go out and face the general public. And you've been out there facing the general public for a couple of months, and you're probably thinking, oh dear. Uh, <laughs> Things could have been a bit better maybe, but hopefully you're surviving that all right and getting on with it and well done. Congratulations for that, that difficult period. So learn from your patients and listen to them. And when you make mistakes, as you will, because we all, we all do, we're all human. So forgive yourselves for making those mistakes and learn from them. And just as you should always be a, a lifelong learner, always too be a lifelong teacher. That's how we're going to pass on your skills and your experiences to your colleagues and to next generations of students. The second thing that isn't going to change is the need for you to support one another uh, as friends and as colleagues because you are members of a great profession. And you and we all share the aims of that profession, which is to improve the health and well-being of our patients and of the population. 
whether that's in Liverpool or the Northwest or wherever. And the third thing that won't change, which is related to that, because this is, goes to the very core of your profession and all healthcare professions, which is that we must never compromise on things like the respect we show our patients, um, our own integrity and our honesty, our willingness to go the extra mile for our patients, because these are the things that people need most from us. Don't compromise on compassion, which is the hardest quality of all. Your patients expect and deserve your complete commitment. And that's not always to give. There'll be days when you're tired and you're frustrated and, um, and you're really just having a bad day. But uh, your patients are entitled to that commitment. And you should always give your patients hope and confidence in you, even sometimes when you don't quite feel that confidence in yourself. So uh, the worst thing that afflicts your patients is always fear. So assuage that, peer, that fear, uh, smile, have a kind word for the patient. It's not just good chair-side manner. It does really make a difference to people in all kinds of ways. Grab each hold of each of those thousand little moments when you can actually make people's lives better in some form. Now, the pandemic has made us appreciate our loved ones and the experiences and memories that we made together. So let's all celebrate together today. We need to thank your family and friends who are here uh, who got you, got you through medical dental school. You may have been the ones who've gone through dental school, but actually they've gone on the journey with you in one form or another. Uh, they've made sacrifices to get you here as well. And um, I hope uh, they're going to celebrate today as well. So graduates, let me invite you to applaud your family and friends for everything they've done for you. Let's also thank your lecturers and teachers here at the university who provided you with the training and the support to become practical and compassionate and resilient in dentistry and help you develop the skills that will make you an effective dentist today and tomorrow in a very demanding world of healthcare. Be confident in yourselves that you have those skills, not just to be safe beginners, as the GDC might say, but actually to progress in your careers and continue to develop throughout your career. We hope that today is an opportunity for you to enjoy a return to this great city and for you and your guests to receive a warm welcome from your university in contrast to somewhat icy wind blowing outside today. So we hope you'll join us after this ceremony for a reception in the Montfort Hall in the Guild. We hope the city of Liverpool will always feel like home to you. And we hope it's a place where you've made friends and happy memories that will last you a lifetime. Our Victoria building, which is the one with the big clock tower, and I've seen some of you having your photographs taken outside it today, uh, despite the wind. Uh, it's a beautiful and iconic gallery. And, of course, it gave rise to the very term Red Brick University, and we keep saying we're the original Red Brick University. But if you look carefully on that building, you'll find a plaque that carries the motto of the university for the advancement of learning and the ennoblement of life. And that's the very foundation on which the university is based. And that motto reminds us of why we do everything we do in the university and how we, might, how we should strive to inspire and engage uh, and enable every student to fulfill their potential by helping you to understand what you can do, uh, helping you to challenge barriers and offering you opportunities for that development. You have certainly advanced your learning. You have ennobled life and you will continue to do so throughout your professional career in all kinds of ways. You've been stretched to think beyond the textbook, the lecture theatre and the clinic, and you've been encouraged to apply the knowledge you've acquired here and to build on it to the world outside. So your University of Liverpool education has enabled you to realise just how far you can go and provided you with the basic skills to get you there. Our university, by which I mean yours and mine, has a long and successful history of graduating inspiring students just like you, who will go on to do great things just like you. You have now joined our talented international community of graduates. This is a really important part of the University of Liverpool family. And uh, it supports our students in lots of ways. And some of you may have experienced this, whether that's through work placements or lectures or workshops or tutorials or whatever. It's really important to us that we continue to engage with our graduates like that. And we hope that you will keep in touch with us. We hope that you um, 
will help guide and support our future students and share your experiences with them by, and help them to broaden their horizons too. Because it's through you that the university is known. Um, you are our greatest ambassadors. It's through your achievements and your careers uh, that you will become role models and you will become the inspiration for the next generation of dentists. And never forget how important you are to the university because without you, this place is just lecture theatres and uh, clinics and even just red bricks. So you are the beating heart of the institution. When we work together, staff and students, the university is the place where friendships are forged, where ideas develop, where careers, develop, careers are formed and lives are changed. So on behalf of the university, I'd like to um, say that I hope you've enjoyed your time here and I hope you'll remember many happy and joyful moments during your time here, not least today. And I want to thank you and congratulate you for everything you've achieved. Thank you. And I now invite uh, Professor Vince Bissell as the Dean of the Dental School to present the graduates from our class of 2021. Associate Pro Vice-Chancellor, it gives me tremendous pleasure to present to you the following graduates from the class of 2021. Farhana Yasmin. Aisha Ali. Aisha Ahmed. Shafi Javed Balas. Neha Shah. Kunal Kumar Agarwal. James Wooten. And Didi Amaka Paula Aze. Kabir Hunjan. Benjamin Sargent. Matthew Sean Fairless. Mohammed Adam. Anissa Aslam. Manique Kaur de Sange. <laughs> Alisa Priya Mystery. <laughs> Erin Georgia Jaffrey. <laughs> Lucy Rose Thomas. Joe McEwen. <laughs> Kira Marie Sands. <laughs> Saba Maria Yusuf Patel. <laughs> Ruxana Begum Mia. <laughs> Jack Bernard Watson. Jack Tulson. Aaron Patel. Katrina Kaur. Kerry May Martin.
Abigail Richmond. Keisha Aborka Letman. So we're going to pause for a moment because it now gives me great pleasure to present two of the university's faculty learning and teaching and student experience awards. So these awards recognize, value and reward the staff who've made an outstanding contribution to innovation in teaching and supporting learning. The university has many examples of exceptionally talented and committed staff who work very hard to ensure the students receive an excellent experience while at university. And these awards are intended to reflect the value that the university places on providing you, our students, with that quality educational experience. So our award winners this afternoon are being honored for their, their creation of a supportive learning environment and developing the skills and capabilities for our dental students. So our first award winners are a team recognized for the use of simulated patient cases as a clinical replacement activity for undergraduate students. Now, as I said earlier, uh, the restrictions imposed by the pandemic caused dental students to face uh, missing a considerable amount of clinical practice. And the question was, how are we going to uh, resolve that? So the team needed to think uh, carefully and quickly about how to engage students in the process of learning clinical practice in the absence of patient clinics. So the aim was to reimagine the whole concept of simulated practice and embed this in a recognized framework for case-based simulation, simulation, which could be used during the pandemic and also in the future alongside patient-based care when that was open to us again. So the clinical team worked very closely with the School of Dentistry Technology Enabled Learning Team to develop a student workbook and an e-portfolio using PebblePad with a time release of content, the aim being to mirror a patient journey. The team used various techniques to make the activities more meaningful and true to life, including developing 3D printed models to simulate common dental problems and link that in, of course, with uh, real life x-rays. This initiative ensured that dental students developed their skill, clinical skills and understanding during the pandemic. So here today to collect the award from the School of Dentistry is the team representative, Stephen Debu. <laughs> Our second award winners today are Sarah McKernan and Elliot Anderton who developed an innovative remote learning initiative to allow students to learn and practice the art, art of suturing, which is an essential requirement for the safe practice of dentistry. But it's a skill where uh, evidence of student development and evidence of student competency can actually be difficult to acquire because of limited patient opportunities, as you know. And that only got more complicated during the pandemic. So, uh, the team developed a special at-home suture kit and bespoke online learning resources and asked you to upload a video of yourselves performing various suturing. And the staff were then able to provide personalized online feedback to you to support your development. This also allowed you to uh, develop your knowledge and skills by introducing perhaps more complicated sutures that you wouldn't normally have had the opportunity to practice in real life. So Suturing at Home received a high level of engagement and positive feedback from both staff and students, and it's a great example of an innovative approach to teaching and learning that could be adapted in lots of other areas. So here today to collect the award from the School of Dentistry is Sarah McKiernan. <laughs> and now we go back to the main event. Associate Pro Vice Chancellor, I'm delighted to present to you the remaining graduates from the class of 2021. Craig William Milne. <laughs> Carrie Ann White. <laughs> Annabelle Galloway. Millie Forrest. Amadeep Singh Punyan.
Evelyn Marie Richmond. Lauren Michelle Robinson. Shervin Rahmati. Jaffa Al Hashimi. Jennifer Ellen Jones. Alice Emily Brandon. Alexander J. Buchsbaum. Emily Jane Atkinson. Ruby Krishna Daniels. Eleanor Hatt. Olivia Alice Jarvis. Vimal Subash Rathod. George Cheeseman. Jacob Daniel Thomas Connolly. Reese Shah. Kazam Mahmoud. India Paloma Jane Casey. Edward Muirhead. Benjamin Chan. Usman Khan. And Saeed Sharagi. So let me invite you all to congratulate all of our graduates. And now I'd like to invite James Wooden to come forward, to join us on stage and reflect on his student experience here in Liverpool. Associate Pro Vice-Chancellor, distinguished guests, friends, family, and fellow graduates of 2021, good afternoon to you all. Today is a day of celebration and reflection on a journey that has been unlike any other. I am truly honoured to be speaking to you all today on perhaps a day many of us thought would never come given the last 18 months. We have all faced unprecedented challenges and deep uncertainty on top of the normal pressures associated with university, such as deadlines, exams, and even doing our own laundry. Since university, we have all gone our separate ways into the working world, but today is an opportunity for us to reunite and celebrate the hard work of the last five years. It's hard to believe most of us started at Liverpool over five years ago. It feels like only yesterday we were wandering around the Freshers' Fair, taking as much free stuff as we could, and signing up to loads of different societies, which we would probably never go to again. I've been lucky enough to do Freshers' Week twice, although my student debt perhaps says otherwise. I actually didn't get into dentistry at the first attempt and ended up doing a different degree before arriving in Liverpool. Although I had experienced university life before, I had the same reservations starting at Liverpool as my fellow graduates. Living away from home, making new friends and keeping on top of uni work. Despite this, I was excited for the fresh start and a new city, as well as meeting people from all different backgrounds with similar interests, many of whom have graduated alongside me today. University is one of those places in life where you are tested to your limits alongside your friends that can create a bond for life. Dental school was a major part of my experience at the University of Liverpool. I have so many memories of dental school. One of the clearest is being given our first patients and being terrified to even talk to them, let alone do a filling on them. My confidence was boosted massively by the support of the staff and my fellow students, and most importantly, the understanding of the people at Liverpool when they were sat in a chair for three hours for a checkup. Many of my patients I saw during my time at Liverpool, I saw for many years. 
And like many people here, I built up a rapport with them and was very glad, uh, very, not very glad, very sad to say goodbye to them when I left Liverpool. <laughs> <laughs> I feel I must massively thank the staff at the dental hospital on behalf of everyone here. As without them, none of us would be here today. And I'm incredibly grateful for all the knowledge, time and effort they gave us all. Another memory of my time at dental school was being co-president of the Dental School Society, organizing academic talks, social events, and even the 2020 Dental Ball. Just before COVID sent us all home, much to the joy or dismay of our parents. Being sent home from university for those six months made me realise how much I appreciated Liverpool and university and all the friends I made here during my time. We, of course, cannot talk about the University of Liverpool without talking about the city of Liverpool. Liverpool has everything you could want from a city. The Royal Albert Dock, Liverpool One, Concert Square, Anfield, Sefton Park, Bold Street, Lark Lane, and, of course, the friendliest citizens I've ever met. No city is more divided through football, but more united through culture and adversity than Liverpool. The city is written off by many, but always bounces back. Its people are the friendliest, most caring people I've met, even if I can't always understand the accent. They treat outsiders from all backgrounds as one of their own, and I believe, for our time here, we are now all part of the Big Scouts family. Even when leaving Liverpool, I think it is important for us all to remember that you will never walk alone. Thank you very much. James, thank you very much for your kind words. I can only hope that your patients were also sad and not glad <laughs> that you've broken that association. Um, I noticed that you've declared yourself as a red by mentioning Anfield, but not Goodison Park. <laughs> so, but we'll forgive you for that. So um, I'm delighted. That, thank you for the kind words for the, the university and all of that and for your teachers. And yes, Liverpool is a fantastic place to be. Um, we're sorry most many of you are leaving. I hope some of you are staying. So we've, it's been great having you here, and we wish you every success in your future careers. So the last thing remains for me to do is just to close this ceremony. So I formally declare this congregation for the celebration of our graduates closed. Congratulations to you all. Thank you for everything you've achieved here. And the traditional end of these ceremonies involves me saying a Latin prayer. Now, since you all speak fluent Latin, I won't translate it necessarily for your benefit, but maybe for the benefit of those, of, of those present who don't. So the prayer goes like this. Salva sit universitas nostra. May our university uh, prosper and thrive. Quapricantes consergamus. And with this prayer, let us all stand together. Thank you very much.